A man from Bedfordshire is standing at the next election on an anti-feminist platform. He started a new political party called Justice for Men and Boys and the Women Who Love Them. Uh, Mike Buchanan joins me in the studio. Mike, very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, interesting. Uh, you're standing where? In, you're gonna, what, you want to stand in which part of Bedfordshire? Mid-Bedfordshire? Uh, no, uh, Bedford and Kempston. Uh, we're, we're, we're planning to contest the top 30 Conservative marginal seats in 2015, and that's one of them. A uh, seat currently held by Richard Fuller. That's right. And it's going to be contested as, as well by yourself. And I think one of the other candidates will be uh, Patrick Hall. Patrick Hall, Patrick yes. Hall. Um, Why do you think the needs of men and boys are being neglected? Um, well, I think they're being neglected uh, because uh, for, 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 for many years, certainly for more than 30 years, men and boys have been assaulted by the actions and inactions of the state. Would expand on that, Mike. Yes, um, uh, all legislation. I mean, you know, feminists sometimes talk about they complain about the number of politicians who, who are male, the proportion, uh, and, and yet those politicians pass overwhelmingly female-friendly and male-unfriendly legislation. So, if we take, I mean, probably the best-known example is where the the state is fairly ruthless in getting um, in getting fathers to pay maintenance for the children after after relationship breakdown, which is fair enough. But at the same time, the state doesn't guarantee those fathers access to their children. So if they have a spiteful ex-partner, it's, 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 it's very easy for, the, you know, for, those, for those ex-wives and ex-partners to, to, uh, to basically sour the relationship with the children and stop, and stop the father getting access for, 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 for such a long time that, that those relationships are destroyed. And quite frankly, we, we see that as emotional abuse of children and of fathers. Are you anti-women? Absolutely not. And I, I defy anyone to find any, any, anything in my blogs or, 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 or books that, that, that would suggest otherwise. It's just, it's, it's a shaming tactic, Roberto, that's used to, to, to silence anti-feminists. And I, 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 it's water so on the duck's back. Mike, how have you arrived at this point where you want to start this, this pro-male group of you, or this anti-feminist uh, movement you want to stand at the next election in Bedford and Kempton? Where, what's brought you to this point? I think just a realisation that there are just so many ways in which men over the past 30 years have been assaulted, as I say, by the actions and inactions of the state. There's fathers' access to children. But uh, um, another, another big one for us is domestic violence. There is absolutely no question that men suffer as much domestic violence as they perpetrate, and yet the state uh, provides a lot of resources for female victims of domestic abuse and violence, and virtually none for, for male victims. So, so for example... But yes, but while there, there are male victims of, of, of domestic violence, the numbers are very small. They're, they're not. No, th- this is exactly the point. You know, we, 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 we recently did, did, you know, put up on our blog on justice for men and boys, um, 289 studies, I think it was, showing that, that women are as aggressive in the relationships with their intimate partners as men. The entire academic community knows this to be the case, and, and yet the... the so why, why have those figures then been suppressed? Because... The story seems, I haven't got the figures in front of me, but the story seems to be that the the vast numbers of victims, the victims who are victims of uh, domestic abuse, are women. That's just not the case. That's just not the case. And it's been known, I mean, if you you take uh, Erin Pitsey, who's who's a big campaigner in this area, back in about 71, she, she, she founded one of the first women's refuges in the world in Chiswick. And within about a year or two, she was ousted by uh, some militant feminists, some of whom had come across from the States to teach feminists in this country how to do it. And they have basically seized, uh, th- these feminists have seized virtually all government funding of, of, you know, for domestic violence. So wh- while the state pr- provides over 4,000 places in refuges for female victims of domestic av- abuse and violence, it provides 15, one five for, 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 for male victims. OK, M- Mike, you, you're going to stand in the next election in Bedfordshire as an anti-feminist. Are you, are you trying to convince me that... Over the, the last, what a memory, 30, 40, 50 years, the, the feminist movement has been uh, chipping away at the very fabric of society and men have remained silent. I think men haven't remained silent. I mean, but the, the, the extraordinary thing is that, uh, you know, f- uh, militant feminism, which is the only brand of feminism of any consequence and has been for 30 years, attacks virtually every pillar of a civilised society. And yet over, the, over, let's say, the last 30 years, there has not been a single television programme, radio programme, or, 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 or major article in a newspaper or, or a periodical uh, about the realities. And that, that, that's, that, Expand on these realities. I'm trying to work out where these anti-feminists have been gaining influence over society. We mean how feminists have been getting there. Well, sorry, the feminists, yeah. Um, well, through, through, through uh, Parliament. I mean, uh, uh, women like Harriet Harman, um, uh, you, know, in, you know, in the Labour years, um, violently anti-male, um, anti-family, 
And so, so, so you ask yourself, why is it that, that for many years the state has supported women who want to have children but don't have the resources or the partners to, to support them? The, the, the state supports these women to make a lifestyle choice of single motherhood, but it doesn't support the nuclear family. Some people listening might say that what, what, what you're, what, what's driving you is a pure hatred of women. Well, they, they, well if they say that, it's, it's purely because you know, they, they really don't want to wake up and smell the coffee. And, and you know, if anyone goes on their website, they'll find 18 areas where, where men's and boys' interests are assaulted. Um, and um, if you can find a single, you know, a single thing in there which has anything to do with hatred of women, Roberto, I congratulate well, you because nobody else has. Where are, where are boys being held back by the feminists? I, th- I think I think in a very feminised um, education system. Sixty percent of university graduates today are, are, are women. The entire um, education system. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, over eighty percent of. Uh, secondary school teachers today are women. Virtually all primary schools teachers are women, um, and 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 a highly feminised system basically teaches boys that they're defective because they, they you know they because they they won't act like the girls. Um, so so should you've got that all wrong. I mean the, the the studies seem to suggest that girls do better than boys through the education system because they work harder. They, they uh, um, certainly it's true that women you know that, that young women are, are more conscientious. Um, but but you've got to ask yourself you know how how good a proxy for working life is school life, and I think it's it's really a very poor one the reality of the reality of most people's working lives is of competition you know and it and, and if you like it's more sudden death you know you don't go through life um particularly in the private sector having continuous assessment and then then coming back and having an, another go at things so you're going to stand in bedford and kempston yeah. on, on, as an anti-feminist um no, yeah. well, no if, 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 I, if i can just stop you there roberto i mean um we're, um People need, need know nothing about feminism to support us. All, all that they need do is care about the human rights of men and boys. You know, you, you can be totally disinterested in feminism and still think that men and boys are human beings worthy of respect. But of course they are. But don't, don't men and boys stand up on their own two feet anyway? It, it is women, women and girls who need society's help. On the contrary, why is, you know, um, women are always saying that they want equality. Then you ask yourself, why is it they always need special treatment in every field? I mean, there's a very good example in the public sector. Um, al- almost two-thirds of public sector workers are women, um, and, and yet the Equality Act 2010 allows public sector bodies to preference women in recruitment and promotion. It's, it's madness. They can't do that. How? They can't it's discriminate. Called, well, well, they can. It's, it's called positive action, if you, if you look at the, the actual act. But, but everyone knows it's, it's positive discrimination in all but name. And, and, and wherever you find, I mean, um, but, uh, back in the autumn, I gave, I gave um, some testimony to a House of Commons select committee. And uh, on the same panel as myself was a woman called Heather McGregor. Now, she runs um, a headhunting company in London called Taylor Bennett. And she, she actually boasted on this panel that 20 of the 22 employees and directors were women. She boasted of it. You know, so maybe, so, they're the most, maybe they were the most suitable candidates. But if it had been if it had been the other way around, twenty out of twenty two, would, would would she have been would she have accepted that? I don't think so. She, she, do, you, she's, do you think do you think your movement has much support? I think it's got plenty of support. We're also getting um, t- to some people's surprise, support from from women uh, and particularly those who are mothers of boys who, who see their who see their sons' prospects. Uh, blighted in an education system and there there are people who um, are they people there are men there are boys and you say mothers of, of boys who feel that because they're male they're being suppressed held back by this very strong you say feminist movement yes well, it's, no, it's, it's just if you like, it's 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 just it, it, it's in the air, Roberto. I mean, if you you know, you take an awful lot of boys and girls are brought up by single mothers. They go to primary schools where where all the teachers are female, and they're, they're basically taught that that the male characteristics, for example, of boys, for example, boisterousness, is wrong, and you you know you should settle down and be like Jemima. And at the end of the day, you know, boys are made to, to, to feel ashamed of, of of their natural characteristics, and that and that 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 does damage them. Mike, it's been a pleasure meeting you. I'm sure we'll talk again. Uh, Mike Buchanan, where can people find out more about your uh, particular uh, group? Um, probably the best best way is through our, our website, http uh, forward slash, forward slash uh, j4mb.wordpress.com. Mike, I wish you well. Thank you. So what do you make of my last guest, Mike Buchanan? He's got a stand in Bedford and Kempston at the next election. Uh, as an anti-feminist, the idea, he has this idea, and you heard him say he has this idea that men and boys are being suppressed because the feminist movement has been so strong over the last 30, 40 years that men are being held back. Society is unfair for men. Do you agree with him? 08459 455 555. Women wanted women's rights. Has it gone too far towards the female 
way. What do you think? Text 81333, start your text 3CR. Um, and if you're a man, do you feel suppressed by the women's movement? Do you feel held back because women are so powerful and so strong in society? Uh, Marilyn Hemmel, good afternoon, says Rob, that anti-feminist bloke. There's only one word to say. <laughs> I can't say that, Marilyn. That's almost rude. Text 81333, start your text 3CR. Have men been suppressed? Men and boys, have like have we been suppressed by women, strong women who are taking over the world? All the laws are designed to help but women. Society is structured around the woman, and no one thinks about the man. Does Martin Buchanan, who wants to be the next MP for Bedford and Kempton, does he have a point? Think about the simple things. Women have a cold. Men. We can't have a cold, we can't have a flu, we just have to get on with it. What's going on there? Has he, maybe he's got a point. Maybe men and boys are being suppressed, pushed back, held back, and women rule the world. What do you think? 08459 oh, 455555. Uh, Russell is in sunny Hemel Hempstead. Afternoon, Russell. Afternoon, Roberto. Welcome to the programme. Yeah. What do you want to say? Well, my son's 16 and a half. Yes, and then we lost the line. Uh, we'll try and get... <laughs> that was going to be really fascinating. Then we lost him. Uh, one text says, Rob, mum's get mums get oh, sorry, mums got a few quid's worth of premium bonds. She always gets a pink envelope through every month. She gets annoyed if the postie doesn't deliver. Is that is that how you know it's premium bonds, a pink envelope? I wouldn't know because I've never won anything. I mean, just literally nothing. We were talking about premium bonds earlier on. Lots of unclaimed prizes. But what do you make of Martin Buchanan, we, spoke, we were speaking to in the last 15 minutes, um, standing on an anti-feminist ticket in Bedfordshire at the next election in 2015? He argues that British men and boys have been increasingly insulted, demonised over the past 50 years by a group of angry, vociferous women driven by a pure hatred of men, uh, suggestions such as, for example, in primary schools, most of the teachers are women and they have their own warped view, which perhaps um, affects the boys. I, th- I thought primary school teachers were n- normally mainly women because they were the best sort of teachers. You may have you. Text 81333, start your text 3CR. On twitter.com and facebook.com, you will find me at Roberto Peroni Show. Uh, after six, we're talking family and lifestyle issues. Uh, I'm sure this question will come up. Uh, my panel tonight, uh, John Pilgrim, Adam May joining us for the first time, and Michelle Smith, the journalist, joining us live in our Luton studio to tackle the big stories of the week. And there are some very big stories, not least of which this idea that men have been, men and boys have been suppressed. Joe, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rob. How are you? All right, sir. Welcome to the show. What do you want to say? Um, yeah, just talking about men and, and boys being emasculated. Do you know what? M- my mum said this to me many years ago. My mum's about 68 now, and I never believed her. I thought she was talking a complete load of rubbish. But do you know what? She said that all boys and men need guidance. They need a father figure, and that a woman bringing up a child on her own isn't enough. And as a result, boys do get too much female influence. And as a result, they become emasculated, they, they become um, uh, sometimes confused. And also, again, it just it, it, it can interfere with, with, with their development as they're growing up. Look, it, you, you, in an ideal world, a child being... A child being raised will have both parents it doesn't always happen that way but surely uh, m- m- when you hear about most single mums for example or most single dads when you have a, a lone parent raising a child they normally do a really good job they do um and they do and do you know what my mum you know my parents split when i was young but my mum always turned around and said no matter what happens you know me and your father don't get on but you you must spend time with your father because a boy needs uh, an influence of, the, of his father figure so that when he grows up, he's being guided and directed and and taught and taught ways of okay, life well, that, I, I that get, a look, woman can't offer. Okay, and I and I get that, and I, and I get that in in the family world, in the family, in a traditional family unit. Okay, but in in the real world, I mean, Mike was suggesting that men and boys have been held back because of very strong women. That's not the case, is it? He he, he might be touching on a few points, but he, he could be going a bit extreme, but. He, you know, he does have a, he does have, I think, a valid point. I think it needs to be looked into a bit more, a bit more research done. But there is something there. 
you know, whether it's you know primary school teachers or or you know a mother bringing up her children, there's definitely something there that I think does does affect boys growing up without a father figure. But Joe, again, it's, it's more research, Rob. Joe, I wish you well. Have a safe afternoon. You want to text us eight one three double three? Start your text three CR. Are men and boys held back in society by women who are simply too strong? We spoke earlier on to Mike Buchanan, who's going to be standing at the next election on an anti-feminist ticket in Bedfordshire. He has this view that for the last 50 years, British men and boys have been, he says, increasingly insulted and demonised by vociferous, angry women driven by a pure hatred of men. That society is structured around the woman and it's detrimental to men and boys. We're being held back, apparently. Uh, some interesting comments have emerged. I'll give you just a flavour of some of, the, some of the text coming through. Uh, Lynn says, Rob, he's got a fat chance of being elected by any woman as an MP. I've never met a man who feels emasculated by a woman. Do you? I can't answer that. Uh, Ed in De- Bedford Afternoon Ed says, Rob, um, adverts portray men as useless and needing women to do things for them, and it's degrading. Also, men make great teachers. Yes, they do, Ed. We've got some really good topics tonight, um, not least of which we'll be l- looking back at what uh, Mike Buchanan had to tell us. He's from Bedfordshire. He's going to be standing at the next general election in Bedford and Kempston, uh, the seat currently held by uh, Richard Fuller MP, previously held by uh, Patrick Hall. Uh, and Mike is, is divorced, and he's got to stand on an anti-feminist ticket. He, his argument, his, the main thrust of his argument, is that men and boys, British men and boys, have been, over the last 50 years, increasingly insulted, demonised, by angry, vociferous women driven by, he claims, a pure hatred of men. Women are holding men back. Ladies, are you holding your man back? Gentlemen, do you feel held back, repressed because of women in society? Because they're stronger than you? Uh, thank you for all your comments. We spoke earlier on to Mike Buchanan, who's standing uh, in Bedford at the next election on an anti-feminist ticket. Uh, I'll try to read some of the messages because some of them are, um, quite frankly, unbroadcastable. Um, you can see more on our Facebook page and Twitter, do- Twitter page, twitter.com at Roberta Um Neil says he sounds like a bit of a nutter. I'm sure he would disagree with you. Uh, Paul says, I must say man bashing seems to be the dumb thing nowadays by some women. And in fairness to us men, we do not make make too much of a fuss about it i think it would be a lot healthier if both sexes had more respect for each other spot on lisa says he needs to grow a pair <laughs> have a look for yourselves it's very entertaining i have to say that our facebook followers are very vocal very clever people